the Canary Islands, Islas Canarias, Lisbon, Table of Contents. Chapter 19 Las Palmas de Gran Canaria Here are the Canary Islands showing the two most populated islands, Tenerife and Gran Canaria. This is Las Palmas on the island of Gran Canaria. Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, commonly known as Las Palmas is the capital, jointly with Santa Cruz on Tenerife, and is the most populous city of the Canary Islands. Las Palmas in the Canary Islands is not to be confused with Palma de Mallorca, which is the capital city of the Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean Sea. Las Palmas was founded in 1478, with the name Real de Las Palmas by Juan Rajon, head of the invading Castilian army, before engaging in war with the local Guanches, aboriginal people of the Canary Islands. In 1492, Christopher Columbus anchored in the port of Las Palmas and spent some time on the island before embarking on his first trip to the Americas. He also stopped here on the way back to Spain. Today, a museum is named after him, Casa Colón, in the Vegeta area of the city. In 1595 Francis Drake attempted to plunder the island but failed. Four years later, in 1599, Las Palmas was raided and partly destroyed by the Dutch under Vice Admiral Peter van der Does. This is considered a major event in the city's history. In 1927 Las Palmas was designated as the second capital of the Canary Islands. From the 1833 Territorial Division of Spain until that time, the only capital of the Canaries was the city of Santa Cruz de Tenerife. Las Palmas is home to the Canarian Ministry of Presidency, shared in a four-year term with Santa Cruz de Tenerife, one half of the ministries and boards of the Canarian government, the other half being located in Tenerife, Gran Canaria Provincial Courts and two courts of the Superior Court of Justice of the Canary Islands. In July 1936 General Francisco Franco launched the coup from Las Palmas that eventually turned into the Spanish Civil War. Ship stuck at the Santa Catalina Terminal, a major hub both for intra-island ferry services and cruise ships. Here is the Santa Catalina cruise ship terminal. This is a satellite view of the Santa Catalina cruise ship terminal. The terminal was equipped with seating, toilets, bank outlets, bus stops and taxi ranks. The huge El Moye shopping complex is just opposite the port gates. This is the El Moye shopping complex. Besides international shops like Benetton, C&A and Mango, El Muel has offbeat stores like Whatever Floats Your Boat and Bijou Bridget, selling quirky goods like character teapots and craftware. This is a satellite view of the area near the cruise port and the El Moye shopping complex. The terminal has a sail effect canopy at its exit gate and the city center is just a 5 to 10 minute walk away. This is a view of the El Moye shopping complex. The Science and Technology Museum, Museo Elder de la Ciencia de Tecnología, is a major science museum. The 5 euro entrance fee, 3.5 euros for children, includes unlimited use of the internet cafe inside. This is a view of the Museo Elder de la Ciencia via Tecnología, the Science and Technology Museum. 
This is the location of the Science Museum. To reach the beach and city center, walk straight by El Moye, and then turn right opposite the Science and Technology Museum. Regular free shuttle buses called Wawas operate every few minutes from the port gates to the city market. However, if you'd rather walk into town, it's not far, and it's a pleasant walk. This shows the cruise ship terminal and other points of interest. This is a view of the Plaza de España. A main street in the city extending from Plaza de España is Avenida de José Mesa y López. This is a view of the Plaza de España. Several blocks up Avenida de José Mesa y López from Plaza de España is the large El Corte Inglés department store. This is a view of the El Corte Inglés department store. We will next have a short video clip about Las Palmas in the Canary Islands. Despite its name, Gran Canaria is not the biggest one of the isles. It was simply the biggest island discovered at the time it was named. Its capital city, Las Palmas, with its 400,000 inhabitants, is the biggest city of the isles. The part of the city situated south of the river Guiniguada is the old town. This is the commercial district of Las Palmas. The chapel, as well as the highly controversial kiosk, stand on the square of San Telmo. It's an ideal meeting place. The busiest shopping street of the city, Calle Mayor de Triana, starts from here. Every kind of business can be found here. Elegant little shops and huge shopping malls. We can watch the shop windows along more than one kilometer, and in case we get tired, there are plenty of benches and cafes on the way. We can have ice cream or simply a fast snack in one of the inevitable fast food restaurants. Nothing can set limit to the shopping. Our bank cards are accepted everywhere, and although banks close at two in the afternoon, Automatic teller machines provide cash day and night. The most remarkable building of the old city is the Casa de Colón, or the House of Columbus, which, contrary to its name, has never belonged to Columbus. It was the palace of Pedro de Vega, the governor of the island. Columbus spent four weeks here as a guest of the governor when one of the three ships constituting his fleet, the Pinta, was damaged and was repaired in the harbor of Las Palmas. The interesting sight of the symmetrical house is that all its doors and windows are different from each other. The wooden balcony and a prominent little terrace, screen and window shutter, lead glass and mosaic, gothic stone frame and wrought iron bars, and carved ornaments. There is a lot to admire. The biggest ecclesiastical building of Las Palmas is the Santa Ana Cathedral. The three-neve church with the two tower bells, like other cathedrals, took several centuries to build. When the work began, gothic was the dominating style. However, by the time it was completed, classical became fashionable. The front facade is the work of the famous local architect Luján Pérez. Opposite the cathedral stands the palace of the city hall, which is also of classical style that has been used only for representational purposes for a long time. On the square between the two buildings, three full-sized dog statues lie on their stomachs. It's probable that the name Canary comes from the Latin canis, or dog. The St. Francisco Fortress is younger, but the Las Palmas Fortress is much bigger. It was built to prevent the attackers who might pass beyond the La Luz Fortress. The Dutch attack in 1599 was an example of this. 
Chapter 20 The Vegeta District Vegeta is the historical center of Las Palmas. The city's main square, Plaza de Santa Ana, is dominated by Las Palmas 15th century cathedral of the same name. The Twin Tower Cathedral was the first church in the Canary Islands. The Gothic-style cathedral features an elaborate high Baroque central altar and a display of church ornaments, originally from St. Paul's Cathedral in London. Christopher Columbus anchored in the port of Las Palmas and spent some time on the island. On his first trip to the Americas in 1492, he also stopped here on the way back to Spain. The Casa Museo de Colón is in the Plaza de San Antonio in the back of the cathedral. It focuses on the history of the Canary Islands and its relations with America. This is the location of the Casa Museo de Colón in the Vegeta district. Las Palmas atmospheric Vegeta and Triana quarters are a warren of streets lined with restaurants, cafes and shops, including Spain's most famous department store, El Corte Inglés, as well as small boutiques selling high-quality leather goods and locally made pottery. This is a view of the Las Palmas Vegeta district. The lovely Percado Ramos is in the Ciudad Jardín, Garden City, region of Las Palmas. This park has traditional Canarian flora, including dragon trees, as well as the Pueblo Canario, a traditional Canarian village established in 1939. This is a view of the Parque do Ramos. This is the Ciudad Jardín, or Garden City region of Las Palmas. This is a view of the Ciudad Jardín, or Garden City, region of Las Palmas. Another visitor attraction of the Parque do Ramos is the Pueblo Canario, Canarian village. A complex of traditionally built houses forming a typical Canarian village with gates, turrets and an atrium. Pueblo Canario was designed in the 1930s by the brothers Nestor and Miguel Fernandez de la Torre to interest tourists in native culture. It has a large central square, surrounded by shops selling local handicrafts, and regular shows of Canarian music and dance take place. The Museo Nestor is also part of the Pueblo Canario complex. Opened in 1956, this museum exhibits a multitude of works by Nestor de la Torre, who is considered one of Spain's principal symbolist painters. This is a view of the Museo Nestor. We will next have another short video clip about Pueblo Canario in Las Palmas. Canary Village was built up in Doramas Park. According to the designs of Nestor de la Torre, in one group of buildings, as an outdoor village museum, it was designed to present everything that's nice and interesting in the architecture of the island. The houses embrace a paved square, planted with palms, which is, at the same time, the terrace of the restaurant operating here. At the other end of the square, in the former house of De La Torre, the ideal Gran Canaria is exhibited, dreamt of by the artist whose early death prevented him from making the dreams come true. The Museo Canario is located in the historic district of Vegeta. Founded in 1879, Museo Canario has a valuable collection of Canary archaeological objects exhibited in 16 halls. The Museo Canario also has a library of over 60,000 volumes, many of them dealing with the Canary Islands topics. Its archive covers the period from 1785 until today. The Naval Museum is located beside the Plaza de la Alameda. 
there is a 1940 replica of the famous Santa Maria ship that Christopher Columbus set off in 1492 to discover the New World. The Naval Museum has a collection of old charts, navigational instruments and a variety of ship's flags. The Atlantic Center of Modern Art, CAAM, opened in 1989 is one of the most important centers for the cultural and artistic life of the Canary Islands. The Atlantic Center of Modern Art is responsible for disseminating the art made in the islands to the rest of the world, especially Africa, America and Europe. The Atlantic Center of Modern Art has permanent and temporary exhibitions that range from the historic avant-garde to the latest trends. It is located on Calle Los Balcones de Viguda and preserves the original facade of the 18th century. Atlantic Center of Modern Art has permanent and temporary exhibitions that range from the historic avant-garde to the latest trends. It is located on Calle Los Balcones de Viguda and preserves the original facade of the 18th century. The Teatro Perez Galdos was designed by the architect Francisco Uranioli Alarcón in 1867. This is a view of the Perque Santelmo. Chapter 21 Arucas Arucas is the banana capital of the Canary Islands. It is famed for its quaint cobbled streets, pretty whitewashed houses and an imposing Gothic church carved from volcanic rock. This is the location of Arucas, a very short distance from Las Palmas. This is an Arucas street scene. This is the Iglesia de San Juan Batista, known as La Catedral, in Arucas. We will next have a short video clip about Arucas in the Canary Islands. Arucas is the third largest city of the island. Here stands the church named after John the Baptist, which has become the symbol of the whole island. The church, which is amazing even in its confliction, tells us about the glorious days of Gothic, its lanceted windows, thick colonnades, gateway offering the feeling spatiality, salient balconies, sculpture ornaments, are reminiscent of the Notre Dame. The square, with flowers and houses framing it, provide a contrast to this masterpiece of the early 20th century. Chapter 22 Las Palmas Beaches Here are two of Las Palmas Beaches, Las Canteras and Las Alcaravan Ares. The district of Playa de Los Canteras is Gran Canaria's very first tourist resort. Here you'll find many hotels, offices, shops, restaurants, bars, and one of Spain's best urban beaches, the Playa de Los Canteras, from which this district takes its name. This is a view of Los Canteras Beach Avenue. Playa de los Alcaravanares is the second largest beach in La Palmas. It's quite impressive, and stretches for over one kilometers with fine golden sand. Los Alcaravanares is very popular with locals and stays busy all year round. Los Alcaravanares Beach, Playa de los Alcaravanares, has just over half a mile of fine golden sand. The whole beach is traversed by the promenade, which starts in Los Alcaravanares, and then connects with the Playa de San Cristobal and ends in Playa de la Laja, 10 miles south. La Laja Beach, Playa de la Laja, with fine gray sand is approximately 1.2 kilometers long. Playa de la Inglés, 
Gran Canaria's largest international resort area, is an hour's bus or taxi ride from the port. Expect to pay about 5 euros by bus or upwards of 25 euros by cab. Playa de Inglés is crammed with high-rise hotels, bars, clubs and restaurants. But the main attraction is that it is a gateway to the rolling sand dunes at Mespalamus Beach, which is now a nature reserve. This is the location of the Playa de Inglés. This is a view of the Playa de Inglés. Chapter 23 Las Palmas hop on. Hop off sightseeing bus. A good way to see Las Palmas de Gran Canaria is the hop on. Hop off sightseeing bus. City sightseeing Las Palmas. The tour price is 15 euros. For city sightseeing Las Palmas, the starting point is the San Telmo bus station. The duration is 90 minutes, and the bus comes by every 30 minutes from 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m., all year round. This is a list of the stops on the route of the city sightseeing, Las Palmas Gran Canaria. Tickets are available for 24 or 48 hours, with commentary in English, Spanish, French, German, Italian. Japanese, Swedish, and Norwegian. This is a view of the route of the city sightseeing, Las Palmas Gran Canaria. Chapter 24 Excursions on Gran Canaria The Caldera de Bondama is a volcanic crater that is 1,000 meters, 3,281 feet, in diameter and 200 meters. 656 feet deep with a 569 meter 1867 feet high peak the pico de bondama caldera de bondama has an observation platform with breathtaking views of the entire north and east coasts and the mountainous center in the west this crater Named after Dutch merchant Daniel van Dam, who in the 17th century grew vines in the crater, features a bottom with an abandoned farmhouse in the outlines of terraced fields. We will next have a short video clip about a volcanic crater in the Canary Islands. The Isle of Tenerife is home to Spain's highest mountain, the Pico del Teide. A teleferico or cable car transports visitors to the 13,000-foot summit where temperatures can drop 30 degrees. At this elevation, the thin air makes breathing difficult. For some. It's amazing the different colors. Hiking around on the top rewards you with views of the distinctive crater walls below. Ice clings to the northern exposure year-round, and in the winter months, the mountain can get as much as two meters of snow. It's one of the nicest places in the world, I see. The Palmitos Park is located a one-hour drive from the port on the south side of Gran Canaria, near Mass Palomas. The Palmitos Park is in the mountains in a desert-like canyon behind the tourist resort of Mas Palomas. It is a haven for birds, reptiles and other animals. Palmitos Park has stunning scenery and attractions like the Parrot Show, an aquarium of tropical fish, and a butterfly house. 
Chapter 25 Lanzarot Lanzarote is the easternmost of the autonomous Canary Islands in the Atlantic Ocean, approximately 125 kilometers or 70 miles off the coast of Africa and 1,000 kilometers from the Iberian Peninsula. Lanzarote is just 4 degrees north of the Tropic of Cancer. So it enjoys a subtropical climate that remains fairly stable year-round. With average daytime temperatures ranging from about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 degrees Celsius, in January, to 84 degrees Fahrenheit, 29 degrees Celsius, in August. Annual rainfall is just 5.5 inches. Lanzarote is 37 miles, 60 kilometers, long and 12 miles, 20 kilometers, wide, making it the fourth largest island in the Canaries, with a population of 130,000. Like the other islands, Lanzarote is volcanic in origin. Due to eruptions during the 18th and 19th centuries, Many parts of the island appear to be from another world, often described as lunar or Martian. So much so that parts of the 1970s science fiction series Planet of the Apes were shot on the island. The dry climate and lack of erosion mean that the volcanic landscape of Lanzarote appears much as it did just after the eruptions, and it makes it of interest to tourists. The first recorded name for the island was Insula de Lanzaritas Mirasolis, after the Genoese navigator Lancelotto Malicello, from which the modern name is derived. Another legend suggests that after conquering the native inhabitants, John de Bethancourt, a Norman knight who arrived in 1402, celebrated his victory over the natives by throwing his broken lance into the air and shouting Lanza Rota, which means broken spear. Chapter 26 Arecife 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 is a city situated on the southern coast of Lanzarote, and has been the capital since 1852. Arecife owes its name to the rock reef. Arcife is a reef in Spanish, which covers the beach located in the city. The population is 51,000. Arcife is also a port town serving the other islands, and also Europe and the mainland of Africa. The tallest building in the Canary Islands is the Grand Hotel Arcife, which is located on the waterfront alongside the harbor. This is a view of the Grand Hotel Arrecife. The earliest records of Arrecife date from the 15th century when it was a small fishing settlement. The name, given then as Arrecife, refers to the black volcanic reefs behind which boats could hide, protected from sudden pirate attacks. Towards the end of the 16th century, the settlement began to grow in response to a need for accommodation and warehousing to support growing trade between the old and new worlds. Growing prosperity increased the attractiveness of Arrecife as a pirate target in 1571 a notorious pirate named Dogen plundered and almost completely destroyed the little port town. In 1964, Arrecife became the site of Lanzarote's first seawater desalination plant. Chapter 27 Arrecife Sites Cruise ship stock at Arrecife, which is the capital of the island with 50,000 inhabitants. The island has several resorts, such as Puerto del Carmen, which is located some 20 kilometers to the south of Arrecife or Costa Tagos, 7 kilometers to the north. Cruise ship stock at Puerto de Neas, which also handles cargo vessels. At the RSEFA cruise terminal there are a wide variety of shopping options. 
Leoni Castillo is the main street lined up with stores and shops with a variety of offerings. Souvenir items. Jewelry. Clothing and fashionable dresses found in these local shops are affordable and plentiful. There is usually a shuttle bus service to the town center, close to Charco de San Guinez. The journey takes about 12 minutes depending on traffic. The drop-off point of shuttle buses is Charco de San Guinez. A few hundred yards to the west is Charco de San Guinez, a man-made lagoon used by fishermen. Around the lagoon are bars, restaurants and clean, tidy white buildings overlooking it. There is a bridge along the waterfront to Calle de Leon y Castillo, where all the main shops of Arrecife are located. Calle Leon y Castillo is the main shopping street of Arrecife. Lanzarote, together with the rest of the Canary Islands, is duty-free, which means that cigarettes, alcohol and electrical goods are offered at attractive prices. In our Cife, shops are open from 9.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. and reopen from 4.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. in Puerto del Carmen. Tourism, rather than local life, sets the pace, and the hours are from 9.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Close by is the Iglesia de San Guinas. Consecrated to the island's patron saint, and built in 1665. This is a view of the interior of the Iglesia de San Guinez. The old-style architecture of the shops centered on El Charco is picturesque, and invites tourists to come in and browse. The promenades along the seafront are also historically interesting. In Arrecife, you can visit Castilla San Gabriel, a fort dating back to 1590, and now home to the Ethnographic Museum of the Canary Islands. Puente de las Bolas is the bridge leading to the Castillo de San Gabriel. This is a view of the Puente de las Bolas. This is a view of the Castillo de San Gabriel. This again is the Puente de las Bolas, the bridge leading to the Castillo de San Gabriel. This is a view of the Castillo de San Gabriel with Arrecife in the background. This is a view of the Castillo de San Gabriel. Playa El Reducto is the beach of Arrecife. Playa Reducto is a good place to visit for a relaxing time and some swimming. This shows the location of Playa El Reducto. Castillo San Jose on the outer fringes of the town was built to repel pirates and alleviate poverty as a public works job program on the island in the wake of the major volcanic eruptions. As a result, it became known as the Fortress of Hunger. The Museo de Arte Contemporáneo was converted in 1994 into a modern art museum and is now housed in the Castillo de San Jose. Today the Museo de Arte Contemporáneo houses the most important collection of modern art in the Canaries. A mini train for tourists is available in Arrecife. It runs between Calle Juan de Quesada where it picks up cruise passengers, and the Cabildo building. It runs every day between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. The train proceeds along the seafront, past the beach at Playa El Reducto, the Grand Hotel, the Parque Ramirez Cerda, the Puente de los Bolas and on to the Charco de San Ginés. A good place to do a historical tour is the old Spanish capital of Teguise. The old town is well preserved and protected from destruction. Teguise is just a few miles north of Arcife.
This is a view of Tegi Say. Chapter 28 Demand Fire National Park The main natural attraction of the island of Gran Canaria is the Demand Fayo National Park and Montañas de Fuego, Fire Mountains. The streams of lava that cover 200 square kilometers have a striking appearance of petrified rivers. There are more than 300 volcanic craters in Timan Faya National Park East Lote de Hilario is one of the hottest parts of the islands, with a ground temperature of 140 degrees Celsius, and is only 20 centimeters beneath the surface. Among the many volcanic features of Lanzarote is the longest volcanic tunnel in the world called the Atlantida Tunnel, which is over 7 kilometers long and includes the La Cueva de los Verdes and Yamios del Agua. The volcano park at Timan Faya is the top tourist attraction of the Canary Islands. This was the scene of the world's longest ever volcanic eruption some 270 years ago that a full six years elapsed before the eruptions finally came to an end. This is the location of Timanfaya National Park. This is a map of Timanfaya National Park. The Montañas del Fuego, Fire Mountains, were created between 1730 and 1736 when more than 100 volcanoes covering more than 50 square kilometers, devastated this part of the island, including several villages. The last eruptions were in 1824, and due to the low rainfall, and therefore lack of erosion, this area appears much the same as it did just after the eruptions in 1968 the area was declared a national park. Parque Nacional de Timanfea this part of the island is a must for any visitor to the island because of its unique Martian landscape and rare plant species. There are several demonstrations of how hot the area is, and temperatures just a few meters below the surface reach between 400 degrees Celsius and 600 degrees Celsius. Dry brush thrown into a hole and the ground catches fire immediately while water poured into a borehole erupts seconds later in the form of steam like a mini geyser. We will next have a short video clip about Yami Ozdel Aqua. Jamenos del Agua truly reflects the artist's attraction to multifunctional buildings and water. It's a system of natural underwater cavities and caves, where Manrique created an underwater restaurant and concert hall. The cave system and the salty lake in it are linked to the sea, so we can see the flux and reflux in it. However, that's not what it's famous for, but for its unique acoustics, which make it ideal for holding special concerts. On the surface, a specially formed swimming pool planted around with tropical plants has been created. While it is not possible to just wander freely around the volcanoes, a coach trip around the National Park, La Ruta de los Volcanos, is included in the entry fee. The tour features an audio commentary that includes excerpts from the diary of a local priest who was the eyewitness to the devastating eruptions. A ride through the Montañas de Fuego or Mountains of Fire takes you through a barren landscape of lava. Guides will throw grass into the holes in the ground and it soon catches fire from the heat. The volcano that once destroyed life and property on the island is merely dormant today. Vineyards, surrounded by stone walls, dot the landscape. 
There are camel rides available that feature a half-hour journey over volcanic dunes near the Tamanfaya National Park. You'll be seated in a chair, one on each side of each camel. We will next have a short video clip about Tamanfaya National Park. Chapter 29 Yamios de Agua A yamio is formed when a tunnel ceiling collapses, most often occurring when its width exceeds 20 meters, or when gases accumulate and explode. Only a yamio reveals the presence of volcanic passages and allows their roots to be traced. The Yamios del Agua were artistically developed for viewing by César Manrique in 1968. Through a winding staircase, visitors enter into the Yamio Grande, a roofless volcanic bubble, 100 meters long and 30 meters wide, and from there into a magnificent garden with a large swimming pool. The César Manrique Foundation honors the life of the artist. 1919 to 1992, and features work by the artist himself, plus his collection of works by Picasso, Miro and Clay. La Cueva de los Verdes, in the northern part of Lanzarote, to the southeast of the volcano Monte de la Corona, forms part of a spectacular system of underground grottos, the Yamios. It is not only one of the most interesting volcanic formations on the island, but is also one of the longest volcanic galleries in the world, 6 kilometers long. The caves and galleries were created as a result of a prehistoric eruption from the volcano Monte Corona between 3 and 5,000 years ago, when a major stream of lava was ejected toward the east coast into the sea. The surface of the lava cooled rapidly and hardened, while steaming lava continued to flow underneath the petrified basaltic layer. A concert hall cave opens up towards the end of Jamia Grande. This great hall with its wonderful natural acoustics offers a unique setting for concerts and ballet performances. At the foot of this cave is a large stage that extends into the next volcanic bubble called Jamia de la Cazula, the latest to be made accessible to the public. This shows the formation of the lava tube. The formation of a lava tube. In 1964, a two kilometers long pathway was opened to visitors. Lighting was added to lend theatrical effects to this wonder of nature. During the 17th century the caves offered refuge to local people from pirates and slave hunters. 
A cave system associated with that landed a tunnel formed a mere three to four thousand years ago, during the great eruptions of the Corona volcano. A massive explosion of lava came down the slopes of the mountain. As the surface of the lava cooled and solidified, a thundering torrent of molten magma continued to pour through the core of the flow. A virtual subterranean fire hose of lava. This shows how a lava tube is formed. The outer surface of the lava cools first forming a solidified tube. The hot lava inside continues to flow. When the volcanic eruption ends, the molten lava flow in the tube ends, leaving a hollow tube. Meeting the ocean, a massive explosion vaporized seawater in its path as the hot tributary plunged below the surface. The final result was a tunnel almost four miles long that extends from the base of the volcano down the side of the island to the coastline, before continuing an additional mile under the seafloor. From its vast size, unparalleled grandeur and enduring mysteries, it is easy to see why this final submarine section of the lava tube became known as the Tunnel to Atlantis. We will next have a short video clip about Ayamios del Aqua in the Canary Islands. Jamenos del Agua truly reflects the artist's attraction to multifunctional buildings and water. It's a system of natural underwater cavities and caves, where Manrique created an underwater restaurant and concert hall. The cave system and the salty lake in it are linked to the sea, so we can see the flux and reflux in it. However, that's not what it's famous for, but for its unique acoustics which make it ideal for holding special concerts. On the surface, a specially formed swimming pool planted around with tropical plants has been created. A lagoon called El Golfo is known for its yellow-green color, and scientists are unsure why the water has that color. Some contribute this to algae, while others suggest that the green olivine, a semi-precious stone found in large quantities here, is the reason. The Money of the Canary Islands The Canary Islands are a part of Spain and Spain is a member of the European Monetary Union and uses the euro as its official currency. Currency exchange rates can change daily. For the latest exchange rate click on this icon. One euro equals one US dollar and one cent. And one US dollar equals 0.99 euros. Chapter 30. The Climate of the Canary Islands. Will it be hot? Or will it be very hot on the Canary Islands? Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year on Tenerife. Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year on Tenerife. Here is the average monthly rainfall in inches throughout the year on Tenerife. Recommended video, Introducing the Canary Islands, Yao2.b web link 240. Recommended video. Canary Islands Vacation Travel Guide Expedia Recommended Video Best Canary Island for You Travel Guide Gran Canaria Fuerteventura La Palma and Lanzarote Recommended Video La Palma 
Top 10 Best Places to Visit Lisbon Table of Contents Thanks for watching.